Hello folks, and I hope you're all keeping well, or as well as can be expected within the current circumstances. And yes, we're doing another Rimfire mashup lockdown special, so hang on to your seats, here we go hey. Now, this is probably the last of the old footage I have, and it actually didn't come off of the hard drive. I actually found it in an old disc that I had stored it on over 10 years ago. So these clips are from 2009 and 2010. So these are probably some of the first, if not the first, videos that I ever tried to film myself. And you'll see throughout it I was experimenting with different ways of trying to capture the action. Some of them more successful than others of course. Now, this particular morning, I was trying to decoy hood at crows, of course, and I was using a white piece of bread broke up into small pieces and scattered about as bait, and a dead magpie set up in a little wire cradle as a decoy. Now, you'll notice that I've gone au naturel here, and using some natural cover, instead of the little pop-up hide I use nowadays, because I hadn't yet got it back then didn't even know such a thing existed. And you'll see that I have pushed my way back into this old gorse bush and threw an old camouflage net around me which I'd sort of roughly fashioned into a bit of a ghillie suit. It was a wee bit of a flaff at a time getting you know, set up but it worked quite well. You may also notice the shooting sticks that I'm using or the lack of. Yeah, I forgot them that morning. Oh, if my head wasn't screwed on. But anyway, I solved the problem by cutting a couple of sticks out of the hedge and tied them together with a bit of string, which pulled me out of a hole at the time. And for those that are interested, I'm using a Ruger 7722 Varmint Target and 22 Magnum with a Burris Full Field 2 4.5 to 14 by 42 tactical scope and Remington 33 grain AccuTip V ammunition with a Wildcat Whisper Moderator. Man, that's still a mouthful. But if you missed it, it should be all listed in the description box below. But back to the footage, and you can see a hooded crow has landed, but I can't get a shot at him through the reeds. He sees something he doesn't like and clears off quite noisily. Then later on, this jackdaw makes an appearance, obviously attracted by the bread I'm using for bait, as I would very rarely see them ever land if I'm using my usual dead rabbit for bait. Then thankfully the hooded crow makes an appearance again. And you're probably wondering why I haven't taken a shot yet. Well the fact is the camera is actually sitting higher than the rifle so it's got a reasonably clear view over the top of the reeds where the rifle doesn't. That was my mistake for setting the decoy and the bait up in a bad location another couple of yards further away and I probably would have had a much clearer shot for the rifle. Another mistake might have been breaking the bread up into small pieces because the bird just seems to like landing, grabbing a bit and flying off again. But thankfully his greed finally got the better of him and he hung around a little too long for his own good. Well, that was a long wait for just one bird, and not so nice weather conditions, but we got there in the end. Oh, there's Mr. Magpie. Bread for bait. There's what I was waiting in the cold and wet for. Just the one grey bag. Still with the bread in his mouth. Stone dead. Two two magnum. There's the other one. Right, he's surprised he got two yards before he dropped dead. Good job. Now this is quite early footage when I was experimenting with the idea of trying to film the action by putting my camcorder in a little green bucket overlooking the bait. And the sticks you see are to help me judge when the bird was in the middle of the picture. Unfortunately it didn't work too well and I didn't try this again until I got a proper 
action camera with a wide angle lens. Now this I think is the second hunt I ever filmed, at least with the rimfire anyway. And you can see I'm using some natural cover again and had myself well tucked into the hedgerow with some old camouflage net over myself and the rifle. I was using a dead rabbit of course as bait and it wasn't too long before I got some attention. There was these couple of magpies that kept coming back and forth and pulling what they wanted out of the rabbit. I let them feed for a while because I was interested in getting some decent footage. Of course I hadn't realised back then that people tune in to actually see me take the shot, not watch a one hour wildlife documentary on the feeding habits of magpies. But I have to admit that people seem to absolutely love any footage I capture of the birds of prey I see when I'm out and about. This is a common buzzard as we know it in the UK. It is a member of the bird of prey family, I think on the hawk side, and it is fully protected in the UK under law, so no, I can't and will not shoot one. Keep an eye on this cheeky magpie. He's not for giving up his free meal so easily. That buzzard must be three to four times his size, but he still had a go at it and got his rabbit back. Man, look at him tuck into that rabbit hay. But he's moving around that much, it's hard to get a good shot at him. If you watch them carefully, they seem to like pulling bits and pieces off, then flying across the field and pushing it into the long grass, probably for later on. A wee bit like a squirrel burying nuts for the winter. Yes, yes, I know you didn't tune in to watch an hour long feeding documentary on magpie bit. We'll get to the bang bit very soon now. You see? Bang! We got him! Now, if what I have written on the disc is correct, this is the first hunt I ever filmed, certainly with the rimfire anyway. And you can see that I've preferred not to build a hide again, but rather tucking myself into the hedge line or natural cover and using an old camouflage net drooped over myself and the rifle like a makeshift ghillie suit. Now, although this isn't anywhere near as comfortable or even as weather resistant as the little pop-up hide I use nowadays, it does all pack down into a rucksack quite well, so you're not carrying as much gear with you. Now, the disc I got this from has a at least over an hour of raw footage from this morning. But don't worry, I did edit it down to the main points, so uh, don't panic. But it does look as if I was probably sitting about 25 minutes before the birds arrived. And they were quite skittish and nervous at the start. But you can see that they've finally settled down and they're really tucking into that rabbit.
Yes, yes, I know. I should have taken the shot long ago. But I'd never done this before, and I was just so excited at being able to capture this in film for the first time, I sort of got carried away with things. Man, if he packs anything more into his bill, he's going to choke to death before I get to shoot him. But yet again, guess who crashed the party? Yep, Mr. Buzzard. And on my first attempt at filming things too. Now this really got me excited. Not that I was interested in shooting the bird of course, because they're fully protected under law in the UK. But the fact that I actually managed to capture a bird of prey on film on my first attempt. But that excitement slowly disappeared as the minutes ticked by. As he decided to hog the rabbit all to himself, keeping the crows away for the next 25 to 30 minutes. Or at least his mate does, as you'll see in a minute another bird pushes him off the rabbit. This bird must be a really slow eater, as the morning really started to move on. But the magpies started to get their courage up and started moving back in. Though, the other bird was really keeping them on their toes. Now, I've been lying in the same position for quite a while now, and I must have been getting a bit uncomfortable, as I started moving around to try and get a more comfortable spot, and the buzzards must have clocked me. Yep, it sees me, and it's off, but wait till you see the crows and magpies reaction, they just come flooding back straight away. I thought I was on for a double there, but unfortunately not, at least I didn't miss after that long wait. I gave it another 15-20 minutes, but the birds didn't come back again unfortunately, so I decided to call it a morning. The crow got about 10 yards downhill into this big thicket of reeds, and I spent ages walking up and down it searching for it, and just as I was about to give up, I finally found it thankfully. Well, that's the last of the old footage, I'm sure you'll be glad to hear. And I'm sorry it was a wee bit long-winded and not a lot of shooting in it. But hopefully before long we'll be able to get out and about again and get some new footage. So until then, look after yourselves and take care, hey. <laughs>